Having a space to propagate plants is an essential part of growing vegetables. While a lot of types of plants can be sown directly into the garden, in many cases we need to start the young seedlings in pots, trays or soil blocks in order to get the most out of our growing spaces. This is especially the case with plants that take a long time to grow, such as tomatoes, particularly with the cool growing season and late frost that we typically get here in Ireland. As I've begun to grow more vegetables in many more spaces, including in two polytunnels, having an appropriate space for propagating the increasing number of plants has become much more of a critical issue for me. Over the years I've tried a number of different issues for dealing with this, but ended up building a dedicated heated propagation space. The issue for me was finding a balance between having a convenient space for all of the plants that I wanted to grow, but also being able to provide enough light and warmth so that the plants stayed healthy and growing quickly. Like many growers, I've started a lot of plants in a sunny windowsill, but they often get quite leggy or too tall as they stretch towards the light. Supplemental lighting definitely helps with this, but in the end I didn't have enough windowsills for all of the plants that I wanted to grow. There was a lot more space in the polytunnel garden that I had used for a few years and lots of light and I still use it occasionally for propagation purposes but I'd really rather not take up such a valuable growing space with transplants for other gardens. The biggest issue was that the nighttime temperature in the polytunnel was often too cool for the plants to grow well and we occasionally get freezing temperatures in the spring that could cause some serious problems for some of the plants. I tried using large containers of water as a thermal mass or a hot water bottle to retain some of the warmth from the day into the night which at least kept the plants from freezing. A small electric heater or an electric growing mat would definitely have helped but I don't have an electricity supply up at this polytunnel. A few years ago I tried the interesting technique of building a hot compost pile and placing the plants on top. It didn't really work out the first season that I tried it and no doubt with some experimentation and a bit of trial and error I could have been much more successful. But the following season I was planning to put up a second polytunnel which was going to require a lot more propagation space and I needed something more reliable and convenient and I was uneasy about risking another trial with a hot composting method. So I decided to build a dedicated propagation space in our back garden built on top of a base of sand heated by a soil warming cable. Although this location is shaded for part of the day, it is a convenient location and it has easy access to electricity. I started with a box for a base that was 1.2 meters by 2.4 meters or 4 by 8 foot with a rigid installation at its base that was 100 millimeters or 4 inches thick. This left enough space for a 5 centimeter or 2 inch thick bed of sand. First I lined the box with a plastic sheet and then I spread out about half of the sand and I laid out the soil warming cable so that it evenly covered the entire area and then covered it with the remaining amount of sand. This particular cable uses 320 watts of electricity to gently heat the layer of sand and is controlled by a thermostat that can be set to whatever temperature I want. The warmth of the sand will gently heat the base of the trays or pots that are placed on top of it and this heat will rise up through the soil and warm the space as well. I then built a wooden frame on top of this base with two hinged lids allowing access from both sides. The wooden frame was then lined with a sheet of plastic which was reused from a polytunnel that had been damaged in a storm. It ended up being a fairly big space with easy access that could fit a lot of plants. This propagation space has worked out quite well for the last few seasons. It's much warmer than the polytunnel in the spring and has a lot more light and space than the south facing window in our house. While well, I have to make sure that I open the lids enough to allow adequate ventilation, especially during warm and sunny days, and to close them again at night, I never have to worry about the frost. I was quite interested in finding out just how effective this setup was, so I set up a temperature logger with four sensors to see how the temperature changed over a 24 hour period. I set up one sensor outside of the box to record the ambient air temperature, and it showed the temperature dropping below freezing overnight and then getting quite warm again during the day. Another sensor was positioned under the flats or pots on the surface of the heated sand and this showed a fairly consistent temperature which was to be expected and it showed when the heating coil actually had turned on to heat up the sand again. I set up the third sensor on the surface of the growing medium in a pot which would have approximated the temperature that a seed would have been exposed to. This was cooler overnight but also warmer at times during the day when the sun was shining which warmed up the growing medium from the top. 
The fourth sensor I attached to the underside of a leaf of a plant, tracking the temperature of the air inside the box, which fluctuated quite a bit with the opening and closing of the lid of the box during the day, and when the weather went from sunny to cloudy. The main thing was that the temperature inside the space at night was well above freezing, though perhaps not high enough for the plants to continue to grow. Seeing how low the temperature got on this cold night, I ended up putting on a second layer of plastic on the inside of the tunnel as a type of double glazing in order to reduce the heat loss some more. The next night had a forecast for a similar temperature range, so I set up the sensors in comparable locations in the polytunnel. It was interesting to see how low the temperature of the air and the soil dropped overnight in this polytunnel space compared to in the heated propagation space. This temperature was low enough to really slow the germination of seeds and the growth of the plants, and almost low enough for there to have been frost damage. There are of course costs to all this, including the upfront cost for materials and the soil warming cables, as well as the ongoing cost for the electricity that it uses. For the first season that I was using this heated propagation space, I set up an energy monitor to determine how much electricity it actually used. The day-to-day -day usage was highly variable, depending on the outside temperature and the temperature I set for the thermostat, with an average of 1.65 kilowatt hours per day over the 140 days that I had the energy monitor installed. This totaled about 230 kilowatt hours for most of the propagation season, which cost me an extra 42 euro on my electricity bill, or about 30 cent extra per day. A lot of the electricity that we use is generated by wind turbines, so the climate cost of this energy use would have been relatively low. But apparently 230 kilowatt hours of electricity would have released 75 kilograms of CO2 to the atmosphere based on the typical supply for the electricity grid in Ireland. Whether this is an appropriate use for electric energy at all is, I think, an open question. The more consistent warmth in the space, especially at night, definitely translated into faster growth of the plants, too fast in some cases. I had sown the tomato plants at the usual dates in early spring, which I had worked out over previous seasons to produce reasonably sized plants when the space was finally ready for them in the polytunnel. But now, with the heated propagation space, they grew too fast and became quite big before the garden bed was ready for them. I have needed to delay the sowing times of some plants by more than a month, and I've also adjusted the temperature that the thermostat is set at for the heating coil, but I'm still working at finding a balance between how warm the space is and how fast I want the plants to grow. Now the limiting factor seems to be light, as the shadow from our house for part of the day is an issue. The second layer of plastic that I had added to help reduce the loss of heat also reduces the level of sunlight available to the young plants. This contributes to the plants becoming too tall as they stretch towards the light. Last year I added a few high efficiency light bulbs to help to supplement the sunlight in the mornings and evenings, but this year I decided to try using the space without them. I think that was a mistake in the end and I need to invest in some decent strip lights if I'm going to use the space again next season. I built this heated propagation space as a temporary solution for a few seasons, and like many things it's a work in progress where I can try out a number of different things to see what works best. And in the meantime, I'm trying to get the most out of this a valuable additional growing space. It had been full of tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, or aubergine plants for a few months, and these have been replaced with courgette or zucchini, squash, cucumbers, and a few beans as the season progresses. I used it earlier in the spring for starting some early cool season crops, and in the autumn and winter I used it for growing flats of microgreens. In another month or so, when most of the plants are transplanted into the gardens, I plan to use this space to grow pots of basil and to do a few pot trials and other explorations. But it is definitely very useful having this space, which is dedicated to propagation, especially with the number of plants that I grow. And it really helps to have the extra heat when I need it, and the convenience of being able to set the temperature to whatever I want it. And this is the benefit of a bit of technology and the convenience of electricity. This summer I'm planning to put up an additional third smaller polytunnel which will be used for working storage and propagation and I plan to move this heated propagation base into that polytunnel which will hopefully have an off-grid electricity supply. And I'm also interested in exploring again the possibilities of using the heat from a compost pile to heat the propagation space either directly or indirectly and to use the soil warming cable as a backup or secondary supply. 
there's a number of different options that I'm interested in exploring with this and I'm planning to make another video about it all. If you're interested in this type of thing, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any future videos that I make. And if you value the work that I do and want to support this Red Gardens project even more, I've identified a few options in the description below, including my Patreon page. Any contributions you can make would be greatly appreciated, but most importantly, thank you for watching.